Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well, and welcome to today's second half slash bonus. I don't really know how to label this. I know there's going to be a lot of very interesting information that I'm going to share with you. It is a little different than what I normally do, but still along the same lines as what I normally do. So uh, if that makes any sense. But before we get into that, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman, Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost you a cent. Click that like button. takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon. And folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because these things, they really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. And folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to today's second upload, shall we? All right, so today I am going to discuss a couple different things. Um, I have a very interesting bunch of information on um, Super Soldier Program, along with Dumb's Deep Underground Military Bases. Uh, also, a couple of very interesting articles that I have found um, about a topic that has been kind of trending online as of late. Um, I guess what we can do is we can start with the, they both go hand in hand. They both have kind of this extraterrestrial, uh, nefarious kind of link. Now, dog man, there has been rumor of the ancient Sumerians discussing a, uh, extraterrestrial race of dogmen alien beings um do i think possibly that is true yes yes i do uh when i was young before i had my encounter with um the dog man i was absolutely fascinated with ufos um my best friend's older brother was just deep into exploring uh the possibility of UFOs. All right, guys, sorry about the pause mid-sentence. Um, siren was going by and I didn't want the mic to pick it up. This upload is going to, we are gonna discuss uh, things, a couple things that are trending online and um, a couple other things. Deep underground military bases, which I absolutely love. Uh, as well as the Super Soldier program. Um, I've been researching that stuff for a couple years now, um, and I've really gone pretty deep down a rabbit hole. <clears throat> I, myself right now, believe that there is disinformation going on in the community. I believe that there are plants put in these communities, the UFO community, the cryptid community, the supernatural paranormal as a whole the government i believe or it's either the information is either coming from the government plants or ignorance either way it's bad for the community um i believe that a lot of it has to do with plants put here to cause disarray and with disinformation when the information is in front of us 
and there is a kind of solidarity, the communities will agree and there is no turmoil and we possibly come up with some pretty damn good theories at that point. When there's disinformation, two, three different sides and no one gets along. It's like politics and it's not good for our community as well as the one piece ignorance. People just say things just randomly because it sounds good to them without researching it. Uh, and that is pretty rampant, but a lot of it is the government. Um, two different things that I want to discuss. Super Soldier Program and the UFO UAP. I believe that the Super Soldier Program was designed to even the playing field, okay? Humanity bottlenecked thousands of years ago when we were warring with the Neanderthal. You can Google this, you can look this up. I'm not making this up. Um, there's a great book by uh, Nick Van Drimini, uh, Them and Us, and it is about Neanderthal and humanity, the war, and our population was next to nil until humanity with our great minds because we do have great minds we as humans we can come up with things to protect our species and protect everything you know once we put our minds to something we can do it elon musk prime example you know um but when there is turmoil and you know, just ego, that's when shit goes sideways. Um, so this bottleneck occurred, humanity created better weapons, uh, throwing spears um, and other such instead of just spears, you know, to combat these massive creatures that we were fighting. And I say creatures because Neanderthals were not Humans, they were creatures. If you read this book by Nick Van Drimini, you will understand what I'm saying, or if you've heard me talk about the book. Um, so Super Soldier Program was designed to even a playing field because there are things out there now that want to wipe out humanity, whether it be aliens from outer space, aliens from alternate dimensions, or cryptid. Uh, cryptids are not mascots. Bigfoot is not this cuddly you know, Harry and the Henderson, uh, nor is Dogman. These stuffed animals behind me is prime example of what I'm talking about with the um, fallacy. Toy makers make these. Why? Because the government tells them to create this. You know, they're cute and cuddly, you know, but they're not. They are long-time enemies of humanity. And regardless of how people feel, if Bigfoot and Dogman were to wipe out humanity, <laughs> uh, that'd be pretty bad. You know, people are like, well, maybe we should stay out of the woods. No. Why should we? You know, why should we have to stay out of the woods? We shouldn't. It's our world as well. We, as humans, could live in peace with other things. These things can't. Um, <clears throat> so, this information right here is about super soldier programs and the crimes against humanity that are being caused in these deep underground military bases. This information comes from James Caspold, a former MI6 agent who worked with them through 95 to 99. Uh, he has exposed a lot of the crimes against humanity that took place in Dumb's deep underground military bases and things that are going on right now. Uh, he is being silenced. He is being silenced because of the information he shares, just like uh, David Icke. He is being silenced as well. 
Uh, there is a lot of information that those men have shared with us that the government doesn't want us to be aware of, especially our newer generations. Um, that's why these TikToks that these kids are making is disinformation, but they don't know any better because it's the information fed to them by our government. <clears throat> After the completion of my last article, MI6 are the lords of the global drug trade. I must now present a full picture as to what the intelligence community drug trafficking money is being used for. I need to do this for many reasons. The truth must come out and I need to protect my family and myself. If any of us were to come to a premature end, it would only add more credibility to what I am saying. Therefore, by presenting the following, I am protecting myself and my family. The government harassment and surveillance of me has increased since going public with the last article. I believe this has now become a national security issue. I've had my life threatened, men situated in a hotel opposite my flat taking photographs of me using high-tech long-range cameras, which use blue laser, my phone line and my girlfriend's mother's phone line tapped, my information hacked into, and taken off multiple websites and emails from government officials blocked. I believe this is because I am leaking information on projects classified above top secret, which I will go into detail. The intelligence-run drug trafficking is only classified secret. My name is James Caspold, and I worked for MI6 Covert Cocaine Trafficking Operations with the IRA in London between 95 and 99. My dad, Peter Caspold, also worked for MI6 and worked with the CIA and the Mafia in Rome in 1993 on a covert cocaine and heroin trafficking operation. The global drug trade run by many factions of the global intelligence community cooperating together, MI6, CIA, Mossad, etc. It's worth at least $500 billion a year. This is more than the global oil trade. MI6 control many other intelligence agencies in the world. MI6 created the CIA in 1947 and still controls them today. <clears throat> This black ops money, drug money, or in classic Orwellian terms, MI6 CIA non-appropriated funds is being used to fund government and military projects classified above top secret. These operations include a huge worldwide UFO cover-up and building and maintaining of deep underground military bases or DUMS. One, Dulce in New Mexico. Two, Brecon Beacons in Wales. Three, Los Alamos in Mexico. Four, Pine Gap in Australia. Five, the Snowy Mountains in Australia. Uh, the six, the Nyla Range in Africa. Seven, the West Kindu in Africa. Um, next to the Libyan border in Egypt. Seven, the Mont Blanc or Blanc in Switzerland, Narvik in Scandinavia, Gotland Island in Sweden, and many other places. These projects are being run by a secret, unelected international governing body connected to the UN. There are at least 1,400 of these dumbs worldwide, 131 in the United States with two underground bases being built per year by the United States at the moment. The average depth of these bases are four and a quarter miles deep underground, some shallower, some deeper. The bases are on the average size of a medium city. Each dumb base costs between 17 to $26 billion to build, which is funded by the MI6 slash CIA drug money. Each underground base employs 10,000 to 18,000 workers. A nuclear-powered drill is used to dig underground. This drill goes through rock at a tremendous rate and literally melts the rock away to form a smooth glass-like surface 
around the edges of the tunnels. Uh, some people may, may be like, yo, what? That, that is not informed. But many of you guys already know this, that there are cities underground. Robert Kennedy Jr. talks about one of these in his latest interview or a interview that he did with Lex Friedman talking about, and this was in the 60s, talking about a base that even had a McDonald's in the mountains of Virginia. <clears throat> On May 20th, I personally received information from a former member of the NSA National Security Agency through a third party. I wish to protect this man's identity, and so I will call him G. This is the first time this information is being made public. G was subcontracted by the NSA in the late 80s and worked for the NSA until 92. He's a senior electrical engineer in the Los Alamos underground base in New Mexico. G also worked at the Alamo, Gor Alamo Gordo Dumb in New Mexico and an underground base in Hawaii. He said the Los Alamos base goes two miles underground and is the size of a small city. Well, there he witnessed rows of caged humans, tall gray aliens, and reptilian aliens. G says NSA was very hard on all subcontractors and people who worked very hard under severe conditions. According to G, the United States federal government, the United States Air Force, and Department of Energy run the Hawaii Dumb he worked at. This base goes down two miles and stretches out into the Pacific Ocean. It was here that three very tall, muscular Nordic men, who, according to G, were reptilian slash human hybrids because their eyes would shift into having vertical slit pupils, chased him along the motorway there and threatened to kill him because he had overheard them talking about a piece of high technology. Understandably, G had become emotionally scared from these experiences and does not like telling people about them. I was also told on May 23rd from a source that in June there would be a huge amount of harp engineered earthquakes on the west coast of America and that these dumbs there had already been evacuated and shut down. This was 100% accurate because between the 21st and 28th of June there were at least 400 earthquakes on the west coast of America. I posted this information on the Godlike Productions forum, on the net, and within the hours, the post was hacked and removed. By executive order, the NSA is exempt from all laws which do not spe specifically name the NSA in the text of law, which basically means they can do whatever they want and are answerable to no one. This is because of the interaction with extraterrestrial species and its twisted view that the people are children and cannot handle the truth. There is currently an internal war waging in the global intelligence community regarding the alien agenda. This is between negative and positive factions. From my understanding, one of the main negative fa factions in this group centered around MI6 and the CIA called Aquarius. This group is covering up the truth, blatantly lying and discrediting or murdering anyone who gets too close to exposing what is going on. There's also a positive group centered around naval intelligence called COM-12, which is leaking accurate information regarding the alien agenda into the public arena. What did I just say? These agencies like Aquarius are leaking this dumb BS People are buying it. Hey, that's true because where I heard it from a reliable source who heard it from a reliable source that heard it from a reliable source. But they can't tell us who that reliable source is because it never ends. It's just a, a, a line of lies. Aquarius has also enlisted the help of Hollywood and mainstream media to twist the facts of the alien agenda and blind the public from the truth. Sir Martin Wakefield Jacob, the director for the Telegraph newspaper in 1986, was connected into the MI6 and is involved with laundering MI6 drug money through the Bank of England. Jacob 
was the director of the Bank of England in 87 to 95. Former head of the CIA, William Casey, was head of the Council of the Media Network, ABC. Many insiders refer to ABC Network as the CIA Network. The Gray and Reptilian Aliens worked together with the military in the underground bases called MIEC, Military Industrial Extraterrestrial Complex. This is a malevolent organization, as you shall see in the following information. There is also benevolent ETs on this planet. These groups are not part of the MEC and are from the Pleiades, Andromeda, Lyra, Procy, Sirius A, and Umo. These groups work together in some kind of protective federation. In 1954, February 20th, a delegation from these groups met with Eisenhower administration in an unsuccessful effort to reach an agreement with the United States Thermonuclear Weapon Program. The stumbling block of these negotiations was that these ETs were not willing to provide technology that might have been used by the military industrial complex or factions of the Eisenhower administration. Eisenhower was not involved. Eisenhower wanted this shit to stop, as you all know. <clears throat> These peace-loving, human-looking beings refused to co-op into emerging military-industrial extraterrestrial complex in the United States, Britain, Russia, and elsewhere on the planet. In 1934, July 11th, the first treaty with the Greys from Orion occurred aboard a naval vessel in Balboa. This was one of the most important events in human history because it thrust us into the role we were not prepared for as regards to be host of a malevolent extraterrestrial race. The U.S. federal government disregarded the Constitution of the United States by doing this and not telling people. It was here that the agreement was first made between the Greys representing the reptilians from Orion, the representatives from the U.S. intelligence community. The treaty stated that in return for the Greys providing high technology, anti-gravity, metals, alloys, environment, free energy, medical technology, the government would allow the Greys to proceed unhindered with human abductions. This was only if a list of abductees was provided to the government and the abductees returned unharmed with their memories of the events erased. In 44, the second extension of that treaty was signed. I have very little details on this. In 54, May, under the Eisenhower administration, a third extension of this treaty was called or was signed and called the Greta Treaty. The Greys and Reptilians blatantly broke the terms of this treaty, as we shall see later in this info. The Greta Treaty was agreed upon at the Holman Air Force Base in New Mexico by the Greys and the Ultra Unit in the NSA. The original document of this treaty and the ET materials from it can be found today at the NSA facility called Blue Moon under Earth underneath Kirkland Air Force Base in New Mexico. The entrance to this underground base is in the Manzano Mountains. Also at this location is Technological Base of Sec Secretive Department of Energy. Today, free energy devices developed from the gray and reptilian technology are being built for use in space at the DOE base. April 15th, 1964. Two intelligence personnel met under Project Pl Plato with Greys in New Mexico desert to arrange a meeting in April 25th at Holman Air Force Base in New Mexico. This meeting was to renew that treaty again in a psychological bid to buy time in order to solve the problem of the Greys and the Reptilians. A truly nightmarish situation is now unfolding. Phil Schneider was a geologist, structural engineer, and underground tunneling expert for the United States government and the UN. He participated in the construction of many dumps in North America and other countries. Phil was murdered by the CIA in July 17, 1996 in his apartment in Wilsonville, 
in Portland, Oregon. 79, in Dulce, New Mexico, Phil Schrader was drilling into the desert there to build a auxiliary base in the southern end of Dulce on top of an already existing underground base. The already existing base had been built by the U.S. government in the 40s under Operation Blue Note, but afterward had been taken over by the Greys and the Reptilians. Over a period of two days, Phil and his teams had drilled four holes in the desert that went down several thousand feet. One of the holes... Hey, buddy. My cat scared the crap out of me. <laughs> My cat just opened the door. This stuff that I'm sharing right now scares me more than cryptids. I am more afraid of the information that I'm sharing right now than my own encounter that I had in 94. <laughs> Made me jump, did you see that? <laughs> uh, one of the holes kept bringing up dusty, d dirt, dirty dust, putrid odorous and broken off machine bits that were sent down the hole. These boring machines and lasers came back up damaged when they were sent down there. A probe was then sent down and came back totally missing. Eventually, people were sent down. Phil was one of the first to go. He was lowered down this cave, and when he got there, standing around 10 feet away, were two seven-foot-tall greys. He became petrified, but managed to empty one magazine from his pistol into the greys. As he was reloading, one of the greys hit Phil with some kind of particle beam weapon, which gave him a very high dose of nuclear radiation poisoning, similar to that of cobalt radiation, but even worse. Phil's lungs were burnt out of, of him, and he had a huge scar running down his chest, which he has showed at his lectures, which are available on video via google.com. His fingers on his left hand were burnt off, his bones were burnt, he was basically cooked. Um, a lot of people don't realize that Elon Musk's, one of Elon's companies is called the Boring Company. And people think, oh, it's funny. You know, the Boring Company. He's bored. He made a flamethrower. No, it's called that because they bore holes and create tunnels and underground dwellings. Elon Musk may be the next Phil Snyder. A little smarter, but, you know, he's he's right up there with with the greats, I believe. People may dis disagree, but I, you know, that's my own opinion. He was in radiation iso isolation therapy for 400 plus days in a cave. In the cave, large metallic vats were found filled with human remains generally glands in the vats were high-tech stirring devices that stopped the blood from coagulating. In Aztec in New Mexico, on the 13th of February, 48, a crashed flying disc was retrieved by the U.S. The craft was 100 feet in diameter, was made of a light metal resembling aluminum, and contained E.T. reptilian bodies. A large number of human body parts were also found aboard that craft. The above top secret security lid was screwed down on this even tighter than Roswell to stop mass panic. <clears throat> the next day after the crash, the crash was probably caused by the United States military. The government bought up the property from local landowners. Witnesses in Aztec observed covered military trucks going in and out of that area for days after. The craft was transported to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. The disc incorporated large rings of metal which revolved around a central uh, cabin, stabilized cabin. There was no rivets, bolts, screws, or signs of welding. People in Aztec carefully guard their words as to the accounts of the crash to disc. The Aztec citizens are still being monitored by the military. One elderly woman said her husband watched the military trucks going in and out of that crash area for days. She said she was very nervous about the whole thing and didn't want to talk about any of it other than her husband seeing military vehicles. She was asked if she believed that had been a UFO crash. 
Her response was, if something hadn't happened out there, how come the military rushed right in? Why was the covered military trucks going in and out of that canyon? Why did they deny being there? And why were they buying the land near that area? A lot of us know about that stuff. We've heard about this. This is where it gets a little deeper. Right here. 1972, Cambodia. At the height of the Vietnam War, a U.S. special operations team out of patrol came across a group of alien creatures loading various human body parts into a large metal, metal container and sealing them. A pitched battle ensued, which resulted in fatalities on both sides. As the soldiers pulled back, the aliens quickly retreated to their craft, taking the body parts with them. As usual, a major cover-up was quickly enforced. One of my contacts in Wales, who we will call D, to protect his identity, was approached by an elite intelligence organization called Group 5-8. This group was formed by Margaret Thatcher in the 80s to work at the site of a crashed ET craft in Britain. This is the first time this information is being made public. Even though Group 5-8 was formed by Margaret Thatcher, it is a UN group. The Group 5-8 man called George showed my contact a UN identity card with UN holograms on it. George then drove D to a clandestine meeting on the motorway services. It was here that George showed D photographs of human mutilations they had found near the heavily guarded Bre Brecon Beacon Dumb in Wales. These photos were taken at a sealed off area where UFO activity had taken place. The photos showed a girl of 16 and a boy of 20 who had their removed eyeballs removed lips removed and directly half of their skin was missing george said the group 5-8 regularly found camper vans around the area where the occupants had vanished d understandably had nightmares for weeks after this and was soon after followed by a high-tech american utility van with blue lights underneath it i believe it was an nsa van Days after this, D had his life threatened over the phone. The call was anonymous, but told him to keep quiet or his house would be burnt to the ground. George then called D and told him his life is in danger and to get the information out as soon as possible to protect himself. The next day, a gas man turned up, pulled out an ID card. The moment the door was opened, walked in and checked the meter. When he left, a fire broke out, which nearly burnt down the house with D and his wife in it. The house was wrecked, and the fire brigade said the fire had mysteriously started in a bin in a room where the gas man was. <clears throat> After this, D, another man, and myself were investigating reports of dumbs and missing children around a small village of Xanor in Cornwall. There have been many sightings of alien beings on cliffs there since the 60s and many UFO sightings around the area and large amounts of covert military activity. Some of the UFOs had disappeared into the ocean, are according to witnesses. Two years ago, Devon and Cornwall Police Project Classified Secret had gone on. This was a dig for a mass graves of children by the police at Devon, excuse me, Devon and Cornwall. They had traced the reports of many missing children in the area. This is classified information that D managed to get a hold of from his contact. Once again, this is the first time this info is being made public. From what I can gather, the police did not find any bodies and the digging area was walled off from the public. I believe the police were looking in the wrong place because the activity seems to be coming from underground. When the poet D.H. Lawrence stayed at a small cottage in Xanor. He heard explosions coming from underground. Alistair Crawley, who was an MI6 agent, <clears throat> spent many much time at Xanor. Xanor. 
As already stated, MI6 and CIA are heavily involved in the agenda with the aliens, and I believe Crowley was up to his neck in it. Crowley had performed many satanic rituals at the cottage in Xanor. There seems to be a close connection with Satanism and these greys and reptilians. At this cottage, one night after Crowley left, a woman named Kay Cox died of a stroke. Her husband went insane and ended up in the Bodmin Mental Institute. The men said a reptilian being had materialized in the house, and I believe Kay Cox died of fright after seeing this. Police files pertaining to her death were stolen from the police station after this. Crowley was also at Montauk in New York when the project was in full swing and there was quantum energy grid line that runs from Montauk to Zenor. And the men at Antal Ancient Stones in Cornwall. After a fire at Dee's house, everything had been quiet for a couple years. All of a sudden, after two days into our missing children investigation at Xanar, D had men outside of his bedroom window shining lights in. This is an intimidation tactic used by the intelligence agency. I've only scratched the surface of what's going on at Xanar, as there is no room to go into it here. The big picture will be made public soon. So what is going on with these human mutilations and... The peep missing people. The truth of the matter is the gray and reptilian feed off of their glandular secretions and hormones through a type of osmosis. This is why major organs are taken from people. You mind, your mind may want to go into denial that this is happening, but if you start digging, you will find this is 100% true. On the Crowded Sky website, there is a video smuggled out of Dulce underground facility that shows a gray inside vats absorbing these blood mixtures through their skin. I shared pictures of that on one of the videos that I made. Researcher Bill Hamilton, Hamilton and Talavesk, a.k.a. Jason Bishop, received reports from workers at the Dulce Dumb who worked there in the mid-70s when it was being jointly run by the CIA, Greys and Reptilians, this was before the ETs completely took over the base and kicked the humans out. Can you imagine? We are not. Humans are no longer allowed in there unless we are being mutilated. Is that really like, do we really? <coughs> How? A lot of people are fascinated with this next little bit of information that I'm going to share. And uh, Nightmare Hall. Well, this is some information on Nightmare Hall. The workers said the Dulce facility goes down at least seven levels. Level six is privately called Nightmare Hall amongst the workers. They tell of bizarre experimentation, multi-legged humans that look half human, half octopus, reptilian humanoids, furry creatures with hands of humans that cry like a baby and mimic human words. We, we know this. We know these things lurk in our woods. These things have escaped the dumbs. This is the truth, the proof of what is lurking in our woods. These mimics. Hide-behinds, pull-offs, whatever you want to call them. Also, a large mixture of lizard humans in cages, several cages of winged humans, Three and a half to seven feet tall bat like creature, genetic mixture in cold storage, humanoid embryo storage vats with embryos in various stages of development. Other workers said they witnessed scenes even more terrifying than this and refused to talk about them. One worker told Bill Hamilton, I frequently encountered humans in cages, usually dazed or drugs, but sometimes they'd cry out and beg for help. We were told that they were insane and involved in high-risk drug tests to cure insanity. We were told never to speak of them at all. At the beginning, we believed this story. Finally, in 78, a small group of workers discovered the truth. Tom Castiello was one of the security workers at Dulce. 
Tom worked seven years for the Rand Corporation in California. He was transferred to Dulce in 77. He estimated that there were 18,000 short grays at Dulce and also tall reptilians. Tom knew of the seven levels, but said there could have been more. He said the aliens were on levels five, six, and seven. Lower you go, the higher the security clearance you needed. The only sign in English is above the tube shuttle system that says to Los Alamos. The tube shuttle travels at Mach 2.7. Most signs at Dulce facility are in an alien symbol language and a universal system understood by humans and ETs. Tom said that other shuttle connections from Dulce went to Page, Arizona, Area 51, Nevada, uh, Teos, Carlsbad, um, Tadalil, New Mexico, Colorado Springs, and Creed, Colorado. Thomas also said there was a vast number of tube shuttle connections under the United States, which extended into the global system of tunnels to other underground bases in other countries. Tom said that below the second level of Dulce facility, everyone is weighed naked and given a uniform. Any change in weight is noted, and if there is a change in weight of three pounds or more, people are x-rayed. At the entrance to all sensitive areas are scales, and that person's weight must match their ID card to gain entry. Tom smuggled many things out of the Dulce facility before he escaped, which included 27 sheets of 8x10 photos of alien and genetic creatures in vats, one silent surveillance camera videotape, which begins with showing computer banks with then vats, multi shots of Nightmare Hall, two shots of Grays, one shot of thermal signs saying to Los Alamos, and 30 seconds of the shuttle train arriving. 25 pages of diagrams, chemical formulas, schematics, and alien equipment. A copy of the new government alien treaty with signatures. Two pages of original documents signed by Ronald Reagan, the then governor of California. Each page has Ronnie Reagan's signature, plus other political signatures and four alien signatures. Tom Castiello's splash gun, a laser-type weapon used by the security officers at Dulce. Tom put the original set of these items in a sealed, one-piece, oxygen-free, heavy plastic box. Five sets of the copies are in five different boxes in five different locations, guarded by five different individuals known only to Tom. I understand these individuals would be scared to leak this proof as Tom's wife and children were kidnapped and then disappeared in Puerto Rico not long after this. Now presumed dead, but if any of you are reading this, then please. Okay. This part of the interview with, this is the interview with Tom here. This part of the interview with Tom Castiello before he disappeared. <clears throat> this is Tom's words. I have shared this before, um, but this is part of the part of this article that I want to share. <clears throat> I am saying there are there are aliens in several underground bases in this country, and terrible things happen in those places. If I die before it is proven, search for proof. Demand that the government admit it. If enough people demand it, they will find a way to explain the base or at least explain why they must keep it secret. There are many people that work at Dulce that know me. I am challenging those co-workers to speak up anonymously. Send a letter to confirm what I've explained. In the name of the brave men and women and the aliens that have died trying to let the public know what is going on at Dulce. Expose the horrid place before thousands more innocent people are tortured and die unspeakable deaths. The Rand Corporation, which is involved in the construction of these underground bases, has released the Roper Report. This is now the third generation report that says, according to their research, one in ten people have been abducted and implants by the greys and reptilians and returned with their memories erased. This report has been sent out to 100 
and 10,000 clinical psychiatrics, psychiatrists in the United States. Uh, the Roper report also states the women are being blanked by reptilian ETs as part of an ongoing genetic program. As fantastic as this sounds, it is backed up by some of the world's top MDs like John Mack and many others. There are some 90 concerned psychiatric scientists in the U.S. who are trying to form an organization to prevent secrecy on these horrendous situations. They say that because of the alien slash government treaties, this amounts to the government sponsored blank. According to the Roper report, 99.3% of abductees are being used as ongoing genetic ET programs are female and only 0.7 are male. So the most worst crime against humanity except murder is being done in these underground bases with no recourse. These creatures are getting away with it. And our government is la di die. Well, they drive around not caring making sure Thad goes to frickin' Yale. Maybe Thad and his wife should be down there. <clears throat> this is, it's just disgusting. I have personally seen intelligence documents of studies into the gray and reptilian problem that show they are involved in genetic sabotage of the human race. The gray and reptilian agenda is slowly and covertly taking over the planet. Reduce the population and run the planet from underground using the surface population as food to be taken when and how they wish. The British, Russian, and U.S. government is shooting down around one gray and reptilian craft a month with particle beam weapons developed by Tesla's technology. The Russians have areas the size of football fields full of crashed ET crafts. If that is not a full-scale invasion, then I don't know what is. <clears throat> the British, Russian, and U.S. governments have become blood brothers and the best of friends because of this alien agenda. The Russian and U.S. Cold War is a sham, so these governments could develop nuclear weapon programs to counter the alien threat. The Cold War was a lie for the public to take the attention away from the nuclear weapon program that was really being developed and what it was for, not against Russia, but as a last result against the Greys and the Reptilians. Just like I said, the Super Soldier program, we as humans, we once we start losing, we develop things to to even that playing field. <clears throat> the headquarters of this secret international governing body in charge of dealing with the ET phenomenon is in Geneva, Switzerland. The ruling body is made up of representatives of the government involved as well as executive members of the group known as the Bilderbergs. As I have said, the British, American, and Russian governments are working very closely together because the gray slash reptilian threat to the planet. Although the situation is so horrendous that these governments have shattered into panic fractions, some of which have sold out and are directly helping the grays and the reptilians. According to a very credible United States government insider, Bill Cooper, a friggin' American hero right there. The most important meetings of this secret international governing body are held by, by a policy committee on a nuclear submarine beneath the polar ice caps. <clears throat> the secrecy is such that this is the only method to take certain to make certain that these meetings cannot be bugged in the only place. They will discuss their big secrets. It would be wrong and cruel of me to present this information without presenting the full picture. 
The Greys and the Reptilians from Orion have been involved in an ancient war with the benevolent Pleiadians and other groups. The Pleiadians are very powerful and are the guardians of the solar system. I purposely, I personally do not believe they will let the Grey and Reptilian agenda fully unfold. They have helped us in the past and are helping us now and will in the future as well. I know this because I have had many paranormal ET contact experiences since a child. There is not a room to go into detail here, but is covered in a above top secret presentation with an investigative journalist, Dave Starbuck type revelation audio visual Dave Starbuck into a search engine and find. So type in, type this in your Google or DuckDuckGo revelation audio visual dash Dave Starbuck. So a lot of just terrifying information right there. Um, I've talked a lot about this in other videos. Um, not in such detail. I've shared Tom Costiello's, um, one of his lectures, Phil Schneider's lecture. Um, I've shared them before here. I've shared a lot about this stuff. Um, the importance of this upload though is the disinformation that I was getting at. The disinformation causes turmoil, exactly what was stated right here. Uh, disinformation creates just dis-ease. A lot of this UFO stuff that is popping up on TikTok and such, um, frankly is there there is information regarding it that is true but we're not getting the whole picture um <clears throat> so right here there is a ufo that had crashed in greenland right and um this guy named david Wynn miller who has been on coast to coast, big deal, right? I don't care because I'm right now, what I'm going to share with you is my theory. I think he may be a plant and I'll tell you why. All right. This David Wynn Miller states that there is a UFO that had crashed in Greenland, right? And that this alien spaceship um, had caused a B-52 to go down, and that's when it was discovered. Well, a B-52 supposedly had gone down because of this magnetic pull in 1947. This, this David Wynn Miller states that. In 1947, a B-52 crashed, and we found this huge spaceship. Well, the, the name B-52 is because that ship was created in 1952. So you're telling me five years prior, a ship that hadn't been even, an airplane that hadn't even been created crashed? Nobody questions that though. Nobody will question that. Why? Because this guy's got degrees. He's got degrees. Why, why, why do people believe that? Because he's got degrees. He's very smart. He went to college. He's educated. He must be telling us the truth. Must he? Or is he part of the, the problem? He states that this craft is 55 miles wide and some 300 miles long. Okay? <laughs> Greenland is only... 1,600 miles north to south and 650 miles east to west. There is a spaceship that has crashed that has been uncovered since the polar ice caps have been melting slowly by a, name, by a name, man named Scott Waring, okay? And that craft is 68 meters wide. 
makes a hell of a lot more sense than a friggin' craft crashing on a island that's 1,600 miles long when this ship is 300. So this ship is, what, a fifth of what the size of Greenland is? Then it'd be sticking right out in obvious openness. All right, I think there are these plants. There is a UFO that's crashed there, and it is 68 meters wide, somewhat 200. Is that 200 feet or something like that? 100? I don't even know. Um, but <clears throat> the importance is there is a ship. But why the disinformation? To cause a stir between the two factions. That's just my theory. But, but why, you know, this man, this David Wynn Miller has, like, he's stated in 1947, a B-52 crashed. Why? Why create a lie? And of course, nobody's going to double check it because he's got a degree. He's got multiple degrees. He's a speaker. He's been, he's been addressing audiences worldwide. He must be right. I say this every day. We, the normal people of this area, who are fascinated with this, have a better handle on things than those experts. You know, Joe that lives in freaking... A trailer court in Oklahoma that has $6 in his savings account knows more about what's going on than a doctor of whatever that has thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars in his account in degrees. But because he's got degrees and he's been talking to audiences... And not silenced. Not silenced like David Icke. David Icke gets silenced all the time. This chump, chump doesn't get silenced. Why? Because he's part of the problem. Part of the, part of the plant. Just my theory. Just my theory. But these plants are here. <laughs> I might be wrong. I might. I, I hope I'm wrong. But... Uh, I don't know. It just seems unplausible for a 300-mile ship, two miles, two miles are tall. Look at Greenland and tell me where that goddamn ship is. Anyway, guys, this is about that ship. And this is the scary part right here. UFO found in an iceberg. Alien crew is missing and still at large. This is from the uh, Washington University. Alien crew is missing and still at large, warned scientists. The captain of a ship rammed into an iceberg in frigid waters in the Greenland Sea and found a perfectly preserved UFO inside. What's more, the alien crew is missing and may still be at large. Scientists from all over the world <clears throat> have been summoned to an undisclosed location near the sea coast town of Scoresby Sound, Greenland, to investigate the intact alien craft. The design and technology of this space capsule is years ahead of anything yet developed on Earth, says Dr. Gerb Strober of Bern, Switzerland. Can we believe him? Like... I, I have a hard time when I hear Switzerland and know what's going on, the Bilderbergs, and do we really want to believe? That's scary to me. It's scary. I question everything just like you guys do. But it's definitely from another planet. My staff and I have examined every inch of it, and all the evidence indicates that the craft was manned by a crew of five beings who apparently lost control and crashed. However, we can find no trace of them. The discovery occurred above the Arctic Circle between Norway and Greenland, 
when a seismic exploration ship struck a large floating iceberg at around 3 p.m. May 24th. Damage to the ship was minor, but the collision knocked a large piece of that iceberg exposing a part of strange metal object. When the crew chipped away enough at the ice to take a look in, that metallic something turned out to be the hull of a UFO. No one is able to pinpoint exactly when the spaceship crashed on Earth or how it became encased in the iceberg. The experts deliver widely a fate of the missing aliens. They're dead, says Dr. Juan Cordoba, noted Spanish biologist and member of Struber's staff. Even if they survive that crash, there is no way to there is no way they could stay alive in sub zero temperatures. Dr. Strober or Strober himself, however, is not so quick to declare the aliens dead. The very fact that they piloted their spaceship to Earth indicates these creatures were highly evolved, says the 56-year-old author and uh, physicist. If these creatures are both male and female, there's a chance they've escaped across the ice into the mainland nearby, reproducing and raising a whole community of these creatures with levels of intelligence that we cannot even conceive. So, a lot of information. This, inf this stuff that I just talked about scares me more than Dogman. Because... I've said this numerous times. I truly believe that these crawlers or what creepy pasta community calls rakes crawlers were created in these deep underground bases in these vats to protect these bases. But the mimics, the furry human like mimics that cry like babies. How can that stuff not scare you? How can that stuff not make you mad? I don't know. I know it does with you guys because I, I know the majority of you listening are just pissed like I am that this is happening and I get it getting covered up. Um, one of the greatest books I've ever read, guys, If you have not read this or do not own this book, buy this book, Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper. This is probably one of the most interesting books I have ever read. And I read about, I got that book Oh, wow. 2000, 2001. Yeah, 2001 was when I introduced myself to that book some 23 years ago. So I was 24 years old, walking into a Borders and uh, was looking for paranormal books. And um, ironically enough, that book was in the section that I was, and I said, wow, what's this? And I picked it up and read to the back, and I was like, this is a, a, a necessary buy. This is a necessity to own, because there is information here that the government doesn't want us to know. William Cooper is is, is dead. He was killed by the government, left to bleed out, up down the hill from his home. Um, but after that period time or time period, the book was republished with, I think, 16 pages missing that are different. My original copy from 2001 is upstairs. That's the reprint. Guys, 
I hope you enjoyed this information as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Yes, I get worked up. I get crazy about this stuff because it scares me. This scares me. Dogman and Bigfoot are... I, I love to learn more about them. But when we get in this realm of these dumbs and these, they're creating creatures that are just horrifying and, and horrific by crimes against humanity really upsets me. And that's exactly why I always say stay safe because we don't know. We don't know when or what, but thank you for supporting the channel. Your support's what makes this channel continue to grow and go. It's also, you know, what makes this channel special. And when I say special, it's a safe place for people to share and share their theories, share their experiences without judgment. And that's because of you guys. So please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there, and they are dangerous. And there are things worse. Like this. Guys, never stop asking questions. Never stop searching for answers. And God bless you all.